Thanks very much, Tim. I'll apologise in advance. There are a couple of uh, legacy animations in this presentation. It'll be a little bit annoying, but let's uh, move forward and we'll start off with this video. Batteries power billions of devices, headphones, cameras, laptops, e-bikes, almost anything you don't need a cord for. But all those combined are a drop in the ocean compared to what electric vehicles need. Which is why demand for lithium is predicted to outstrip supply by 2025. Other critical materials like cobalt are sourced from countries that don't care about the environment, don't care about human rights and don't care about corruption, leading to ethical and supply chain issues. Lithium Australia is researching lithium ferrophosphate, a type of lithium ion battery that doesn't require commodities from conflict zones. LFP is also safer, cheaper and more efficient and operates over a wider range of temperatures. Lithium Australia's proprietary processes offer a seamless pathway from the mining and refining of raw materials through to battery production and finally the recycling of spent batteries to create new ones, ensuring a more sustainable industry. Lithium Australia controls four distinct business divisions. The Raw Materials Division, which has investments in listed lithium explorers and equity ownership in lithium projects. The Lithium Chemicals Division, which has developed two novel processes, Silage and Lena, to improve the viability of existing mining operations and enhance energy security where conventional resources are scarce or non-existent. Silage extracts lithium from mine waste to deliver inexpensive lithium with a low energy footprint. Lena utilises fine or low-grade spodumene currently discarded by conventional lithium concentrate producers, which renders existing ore reserves more economical. The Batteries Division, which includes a pilot plant and lab-scale production and testing facilities that specialise in battery cathode materials, primarily LFP. Numerous patent applications are pending and the nanotechnology has been awarded significant research grants by the Australian Government. LFP is the fastest growing sector of the lithium ion battery market. And with only 2% currently produced outside China, alternative sources will quickly become critical in securing a diverse global energy supply. And lastly, the recycling division, which collects, sorts and shreds spent batteries to recover critical materials for new battery production. With these four divisions, Lithium Australia leads the world in securing an ethical, secure and sustainable battery industry. Okay, so that's what we're all about. To a large extent, it's uh, a suite of patented technologies protected by international patents that effectively provide a smooth transition uh, in every sector of the supply chain, minimising the number of process steps and as a consequence, reducing the cost of the consumer. Next. I'll just take you very briefly through uh, the various competing battery chemistries in the marketplace, and there are plenty of them, but you know, most of them are nickel and, uh, and cobalt based. And you'll see there on this spider diagram, the, uh, the best attributes are on the outside and the place you don't want to be is in the middle. NMC, which is nickel, manganese, cobalt, and the numbers on the edge end of those designations, 622 of the ratio. So it's six parts nickel, two parts manganese, and two parts cobalt. You'll notice on that spider diagram, there are shortfalls in performance, particularly uh, cycle life, a uh, problem with respect to exposure to cobalt and the cost of manufacturing that material. Uh, but if you go down to LFP, which is the thin green line, you'll notice that that in fact has very good cycle life. It's the optimum high discharge rates uh, and no cobalt, of course. Uh, no thermal runaway and as a consequence, exceedingly safe, but it does fall short in energy density. However, if you add a little bit of manganese, you can get most of that back and ultimately produce what's LFP on steroids. Next. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we, we've done exactly that, and we're one of the few companies in the world that's actually mastered the art of producing LFP, which we believe will be the next generation cathode powder because it has all of the 
attributes of LFP. It's cheap to make, long lasting, uh, very, very safe. And of course, um, competes with the others with respect to energy density when you add a bit of uh, manganese to it. Next. And this is where we do it all in Queensland at our pilot facility at Wacol. That facility incidentally has been operating in one form or another now for 19 years. So it's not like we're uh, newcomers to the business in the last 12 years of that is focused on LFP. Next. Forward, forward. Thanks very much. So look, looking at LFP on a, an international basis, it's interesting that 98% uh, of it's produced in China. It's the most rapidly uh, advancing part of the battery world. Now commands 52% of battery chemistries uh, and only 2% of that, of course, as I mentioned, produced outside China. That creates a fantastic opportunity, particularly when you're protected by international patents, because uh, LFP will go global and is going global with the likes of uh, Tesla, Ford, uh, Stellantis, VW and others. So the company has committed to a definitive feasibility study, which has commenced. But I think it's worth noting the areas that we've been testing next. And we've been testing for a long period of time, five years, producing commercial format cells in Japan and China. But in the last 12 months, as a consequence of the renewed interest in LFP, we've started testing in South Korea, Israel, France, UK and Canada. Next. So in addition to the, uh, the production of battery materials, we have upstream and downstream processes, as, as mentioned in that video, uh, and in particular in Virustream, which is the only licensed recycler of lithium ion batteries in Australia, and very well set given that there's a stewardship scheme that was implemented this month in Australia, which provides a levy on batteries at the point of sale and returns the funds raised from that levy to the parties collecting, sorting and processing batteries. And of course, we cover the whole of that supply chain with Envirostream. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got some of the upstream technology. The example here is Lena, which recovers lithium from waste spodumene, fine and contaminated materials, uh, and does that without roasting. That's most important, has a very low thermal footprint as a consequence, environmentally a bit more sensitive than uh, current processing technologies to achieve the same thing. We are currently building a pilot plant uh, at ANSTO, the Australian, Nuclear, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation in Sydney. Um, that's been slowed down, unfortunately, a little bit as a consequence of uh, COVID. However, all the components are on site and assembly is going ahead. We anticipate that'll probably be complete uh, towards the end of next month. Next. Um, briefly on the raw materials, uh, we had a significant raw materials uh, exploration, if you like, uh, portfolio. We've farmed most of that out. That's gone to a number of public companies. We own equity in those public companies, two of the most prominent ones, Galan Lithium and Charger Metals. And we also retain between 20 and 30% free carry on the projects that we vended. Uh, and as a consequence, we've got 20% uh, interest in uh, Greenbushes South, which is managed by Galan Lithium, 30% in Bino in Northern Territory, which incidentally has produced some uh, rather spectacular exploration results over the last few weeks. Lake, Lake Johnson, 30% interest there. Uh, and Coates, which is really a Julemar lookalike, not far from Perth. In fact, you know, one of the great attributes of uh, Julemar is it's close to Perth, but uh, uh, Coates is about 18 kilometres south of uh, Julemar, so it's even closer to Perth, has uh, geochemical signatures that uh, are an absolute dead ringer. So the great thing about the uh, raw materials division as we have it today is we've got no ex exploration expenditure. Uh, we've got no exposure to uh, expiration uh, failure, and um, we've got all of the upside in terms of equity in the public companies running those programs and direct project equity. Next. So in summary, uh, Lithium Australia is one of the few companies uh, around the world that is uh, outside China that is heavily exposed to 
LFP and indeed the only company on the ASX that has LFP exposure. And what's more, of course, we have uh, produced the LFP on steroids, LMFP, and probably uh, the only, uh, certainly one of a handful, if there are others of companies that have perfected that, um, either inside or outside China. Um, that puts us in a great position as the, the market globally pushes towards the uh, chemistries that don't have nickel and cobalt and have much safer attributes and lower cost. All of this protected by international patents. And then, of course, at end of battery life into Envirostream, the only lithium ion battery recycler in Australia, soon to be uh, the beneficiary of the battery stewardship scheme, which started this month. So um, I think we're in a pretty good position across the board with respect to battery materials. Uh, and as I mentioned, the only company on the ASX with direct focus on LFP. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. A um, couple of questions here. Can, can you give us a little bit more colour on, on the market globally for LFP? Oh, certainly. I, I think it's... Uh, uh, interesting to see the increase in uh, production on a monthly basis inside China at the moment is around about 30%. So it's rapidly eclipsed the nickel and cobalt based batteries and the installed capacity, which is not all brought online at this stage, I might add, but the additional installed capacity in China last year was over, over 400%. You've got Tesla, uh, converting all of their entry level models to LFP, VW doing the same, uh, Ford doing exactly the same. And you might be uh, intrigued to note that uh, the biggest uh, selling model of EV in the United States, in fact, is not Tesla, it's the uh, Ford F100. Uh, and that will be going LFP. So the market's expanding very rapidly. There's very limited production outside China. Uh, the limited production outside China has been a consequence of uh, past patents, intellectual property that has prevented that from happening outside China. Most of that has fallen away in the last 12 months, not everywhere. It hasn't fallen away in North America. And we effectively have replaced it with the intellectual property that we've got. So we're very well positioned there for an expanding LFP market. And do you have to have your product qualified by some of the names that you've spoken about? Uh, yeah, you certainly do. And that product qualification generally takes a couple of years, but I've got to say, we've been uh, well advanced with respect to doing that sort of thing in that we have been testing commercial format cells in China now with DLG Battery, uh, one of the LFP battery producers, and we've been doing that for five years. And is there, given you across that whole battery chain and you're talking about exporting, what's what's the, the local environment look like for, for Australia in terms of the EV battery? Oh, I think that the, the local environment from a technical point of view looks really good. What it could badly do with is a bit more government support to uh, kickstart the industry. You know, we've, we've got everything that's required here in Western Australia, but typical of uh, uh, the Australian attitude, we haven't developed the downstream manufacturing. There's an enormous amount of interest. There are a couple of uh, junior players getting into that. Uh, both in uh, Western Australia and Queensland. But I really think it requires good government policy and perhaps a little bit of financial support from the government. I notice there's a couple of clean energy sort of um, government commercials on TV these days. Must be heading into election, hey, Adrian? <laughs> Ab absolutely no doubt about it. And I'm not going to get sucked into that one. I could certainly <laughs> make a few comments, but not today. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll steer you away from that direction. Uh, there's a question here with the, with the battery stewardship scheme commencing shortly. Could you talk through how uh, EnviroStream will benefit from this scheme? Yeah, certainly. The, the stewardship scheme has actually commenced. It commenced on the 1st of January. It's not fully implemented. What, what it does is charges a levy on batteries at the point of sale. And that levy, if you look at a, a, a AA cell, for example, that levy is about $0.04. Cents. So the consumer doesn't even notice it. The money then goes back to the Battery Stewardship Council. And then the Battery Stewardship Council divvies up those funds to the certified collectors, sorters and recyclers. Now, if you take a, a AA battery and uh, look at $0.04, cents, for a levy on that, it's, it's equivalent to roughly 
four and a half thousand dollars a tonne. And we, of course, have involvement in the entire supply chain. So if you if you look at uh, a situation where today we process um, uh, a lithium ion battery and the materials that you recover out of that are around about break, even at the sort of volumes that uh, we're, we're dealing with. Those volumes are pretty low, I might add, uh, and will expand dramatically as the stewardship scheme takes full force. But uh, today's volume, that's around about break, even selling materials you recover. Those materials are worth something like $2,000 a tonne. Well, if you take the uh, levies for collection, sorting and separation add that to the two thousand dollars a ton you can do the sums yourself it looks pretty bloody attractive <laughs> and um, i mean your share price has underperformed at a time when you know the every headline in the paper is around the ev battery space can you can you have you got some color on that um it's it's a really interesting comment and i think uh, one of the things you need to appreciate is we're not a lithium producer so the companies that you're referring to are primarily lithium explorers and lithium producers, and where not ultimately our biggest exposure will be the production of uh, lithium chemicals and uh, uh, lithium battery precursors in LFP and LMFP. And of course, the cost of lithium, there is an input cost, not an output cost. Uh, so if you look at the way our price runs, we've actually run uh, pretty much in parallel with the LFP price, which makes a, a lot of sense because that's what our business is to a large extent. And, and what what has that LFP price looked like recently? Uh, I think if you go back uh, 12 months internally in China, and we can only take China as being an example mm. uh, because it is 98% of the market. But uh, if you look at it, uh, um, over the last 12 months, it was about $8 a, a kilogram. There's a broad range of different prices in that marketplace. So uh, what, what I'm saying is a fairly broad brush approach, but it's gone from about $8 to about uh, $14 with uh, uh, recent price rises starting from about November of last year. I think on a, a global market and get outside China, uh, prices are, are more like... Uh, uh, $20 because the supply is so short. And they, the reason the supply is short is the Chinese market is expanding so rapidly that all of the LFP powder that is produced on the Chinese market gets consumed in domestic battery production. There's nothing left for anyone else. And the market is expanding faster than you can produce it. So we really get into a position where uh, the supply chains are streamlined and things don't go into China and back out of China. And that's really what we're focused on. And we're focused on LFP production outside China. And of course, there's been an emphasis on kind of uh, the US in particular, kind of owning their own battery chain or supply chain. Is there a focus on, on the US for you with this product? Uh, we, we certainly believe that the, the uh, US market is probably the sleeping giant because the Biden battery blueprint dictates that uh, domestic supply chains have to be developed. So it's not an option. At the moment, they all go through China. So they will have to develop an LFP market in North America. And uh, we're looking at that uh, under extreme focus, shall we say.